Hello and welcome my partners in crime and I say that in the best possible way as always. Now before I get started on this case and um, it's more of a look into the profile of someone but before I get that I just have to do some housekeeping I suppose in that, that way. One as you noticed that um, the thumbnails have changed on um, some of the videos and that is um, really uh, due to um, a, a a YouTube channel and the people that run that YouTube channel called English Grave. Now they're great and they've helped me all the way through and it was their idea to change them thumbnails to have a sequence so they look better and I love their designs so they've done a few for me and now I've carried on. I don't know if you can know it's the difference between the one they did and the ones I did but you know all credit to go for them for that. Also I'm a, little, I'm a day late I think on this because I wanted this out on Sunday but Two reasons. One, I've had my second COVID jab, which I forgot I was even having. A um, bit of an achy arm, so other than that, I'm fine. Um, and two, because also um, the, the guys from English Grave gave me some ideas on how to make the transitions in my editing a little bit more better. Um, I don't want to have all the stuff, you know, I, I like to keep my videos quite simple and stuff and I think I just needed to learn how to blend in and out. As I've told you before, I'm not technical at all. So um, I hope you like what I'm about to do with this video. Um, but it wouldn't be much different, but it, it should be a, small, a more smoother look um, in the videos, in the transitions through any cuts that I have to make and also through the pictures and the stuff I, I use. So hopefully that is better. So this case is the Levi Belfield case, or it's a profile of a serial killer because Levi Belfield is a serial killer. A terrible killer, really. Nasty piece of work. So there's a little bits about him because I've done the Millie Dowler case and this is the man that murdered Millie Dowler. And in that case, I spoke about more Millie's um, abduction and how quick it was and stuff like that. Also, I wanted to do Millie Dowler case separate from Levi Belfield's case because he's done so much. And also, I didn't want him associated with her, I suppose, in that sort of way. And I wanted to try and explain how the family of Millie Dowler has been really, you know, um, found it very difficult for, to cope with the trial and, and, and everything else and everything else that's come out really since... Um, you know, this, the conclusion of this case really for Millie. So, and then we talk about other murders that he's done. We also talk about his mother and his relationships because he was a domestic abuser. That is what he was, um, as well as a killer, as well as a child killer, as well as everything else this man is. That's what he was. And I think you need to know his character. You need to understand this man is a true narcissist and we don't know why he's killed because he doesn't really say he said it was a hobby and stuff you know most not all serial killers have a reason why they do it but i think the mother or his background gives us an insight into the real levi really and how he thought he could just do whatever he wanted and get away with it so as with many people and levi Belfield is one of them that when they're caught for serious crimes like this they're then put in prison and we, we've gone into that in the Millie Dowler case. So he is in prison and then as with other serial killers like Rose West and stuff they want to change their name you see they don't want to be known now like he doesn't as Levi Belfield he's gone back to Youssef um, Rahim that's his name now as if a change of a name is going to make this man any different. Now he was born Levi uh, Rebbit in 17th of May 1980, uh, 1968 and he was better known then I suppose when the family sort of changed their name and that's where Levi Belfield come from. Now he is an English serial killer uh, and a sex offender. He was found guilty on the 25th of February 2008 for the murders of Marsha MacDonald and Amelia Delagrance. Now, um, and the attempted murder, actually, of Kate um, Sheedy. Now, I spoke about them briefly in the Millie Dowler case, but we'll go into a little bit more detail about them. Now, he was sentenced into life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. And I've said there's a few um, killers like Belfield that will never be released. 
and um, for for good reason, really, because he's he's just terrible, and he is suspect in other crimes, and we we'll sort of have a look at that of how he could have done the crimes, or and actually some of these crimes other people have been charged and are at the moment in prison for. Um, you know, we deal in so much, don't we? Uh, miscarriages of justice in this country you know the more I look the more I find um, I'm not sure um, with this one it could have been either to tell you the truth but also I think in that case it could have been Levi Belfield the MO is there really is now as I said in Millie Dowler's case I think it was 1982 and she went missing and he was finally charged and found guilty of Millie's um, murder in 2011 after he'd been charged for the other two murders and the attempted murder as well. So this is that was the background of him as what I sort of spoke about in the Millie Dowler case. So Levi Belfield was actually born in um, Middlesex um, and he was born in um, Islesworth Hospital, I think, um, to Jean and Joseph Rebbit. Now, Nee Belfield. Now, he was um, of Romany descent. Now, Romany, and I hate to use this word, but either travellers and stuff. Um, that's their, That was their descent. But he was actually not really Romany. He wasn't. He was brought up, you know, on a council estate, you know, in London. And um, his father died, I think, when he was nine years old or ten years old. And his father died from leukaemia. So I think with Belfield, Belfield he likes to portray that he, and he is of Romany descent, but he wasn't a true Romany, if you know what I mean. He didn't live the life, really. So when he was about 10, then the father died, and his mother then brought him up, and he had um, two brothers and a sister as well, and they were brought up in South West London on a council estate. So, not Romany. Romanies travel around, they don't live on a council estate, in London really you know if you're a true Romany there's and Romany I think comes from um, different sort of cultures but he sort of liked to portray that that that's what his background was and um, but really he was just a spoiled child by this mother the father had died when he was 10 and I think one of the ex-girlfriends had said about him or the ex-wife who had actually children with this man um, is that his mother actually wiped his bottom until he was 12 or 13 years old. Also, Belfield slept in his mother's bed until he was that age. And his mother in no way would believe anything that was said against this boy, whether it was when he was charged with murders of these people, and especially of Millie Dowler, but also when he was in relationships and domestic abuse was taking place, some serious domestic abuse was taking place, um, she wouldn't believe the women because this boy was allowed to do what he want, wanted. There was never any consequences for Levi Belfield, really, in, in the eyes of his mother. He was a perfect child, actually. He was a mummy's boy. Now he did attend school, he attended Forge Lane Junior School and then he went on to uh, the Rectory Secondary School um, in Hampton, then later, in, then later moving, I think, to Fernham Community College. So he went through school and stuff like that, as with any normal kid would do. I think with Levi, his mother and this relationship he had with his mother was not normal. It really wasn't. And um, I think a lot of the ex-girlfriends that have said this about his mother, this relationship he had with her was a little bit abnormal. And it made him so narcissistic and then he was probably born listen with a narcissistic personality the man was a very nasty piece of work he absolutely hated women now one of the girls i think um the one that actually said that he was the murderer or could have been the murderer of the um two early uh, two later victims after millie she um said with him that he hated blonde women even though she was blonde but most of what people believe is that Belfield's victims were blonde because he did hate blondes because the mother was this dark haired so black dark hair nearly blue black dark hair attractive woman um that he had such love for his mother that he wouldn't have murdered anyone with dark hair 
I don't believe that. We believe by Levi Belfield. Levi, Levi, Levi is an opportunist killer. Opportunist killer, abduction, murder. His, he, he wouldn't care. If the opportunity was there, just because you had dark hair, he would still kill you. His preference may have been blondes and he may have hated blondes, but he would have killed you, whether you had dark hair or not. Now this man fathered 11 children. So you can tell by his personality, and it wasn't with just one woman, he continually didn't take any responsibility for any of his children. He went from relationships to relationships because he couldn't handle a relationship. He was a dictator in that relationship. He was a domestic abuser. He was very violent in that relationship. I think you've had a few women that have said that has been with him, that when they first met him, and even the police have said that in their reports, you know, this man was an engaging man. He'd made these women feel, um, you know, safe and happy. He'd do anything for you until he got you. And then once he got you, oh my God, what he wouldn't do to you. He would beat, try and strangle you, burn you with cigarettes, make you sit on a stool all night take your phone from you, give you another phone that then only had his number on it. It would restrict you from seeing your family, your friends. This man wanted control and if you didn't do it, he would nearly beat you to death. He was absolutely a terrible man. Now I think Emma Mills was his last girlfriend that he had three children by and they're his, his three youngest children are with her, but he'd had, as I say, multiple relationships, multiple children, 11 children, took no really responsibility for them. He was violent, violent, violent within this relationship. These tri poor children must have seen terrible, terrible things. And I think one of his daughters um, does say something about him and I'll talk about her a bit later, about how he was. But don't forget, he also had a, um, a fascination with children. He was uh, a paedophile. He was. He doesn't like to be called it, you know, he doesn't like, you know, that's why he didn't want to admit to the murder of Miller Dowler. He is a paedophile and he always was a paedophile. And then I, I think with, with Levi, it didn't matter because he, he wasn't just a paedophile, he was a sex offender, a rapist, an abuser and everything else of any woman that he could get or anyone that crossed his path that he thought he could get away with, killing you or assaulting you or raping you. He would do that. So this character of this man, I think, stems from one, probably he was born like it, without a doubt, but he is so narcissistic. And you see that even after then, when he's been arrested and things he's said since then, this man wants to be a center of attention. He loves it. So you can't believe everything Levi Belfield says, either, because he says things to her, especially with Adela's family. He says things to shock to be in the news, to get himself noticed. This man won't go away. Belfield's first um, earlier convictions, I think, were for burglary in 1981, and he was convicted of assault action on a police officer in 1990, and he was also convicted of theft and driving offences. He was what you would call antisocial, really. He doesn't believe in authority. He doesn't believe in the word no, or you, you can't do that. He just did what Levi Belfield wanted to do, and that's even to kill you. There was no stopping him. He, if there, he, he's just, his whole personality is, I'm gonna do what I want, because all his life, his mother allowed that, I think. And so when you already have this narcissistic personality going on, and then you have a mother that's in, not encouraging it, but making him feel like he can do anything, and there's no consequences for that. You know, when you have a woman that when a boy is 13 that you're wiping his own bottom. I mean, that's a little bit far, isn't it? There's a strange thing going on there. And then sleeping in her bed because she's lost her father young. Um, there's a lot going on there. Now, this woman died in, uh, I think, 2017. I think she was 81 when she died. Um, but Levi Belfield had a relationship with this woman up until the day he died. He rang her every day, whether he was in prison or out of prison. He had a relationship with his mother, a very good one, which makes it very unusual, doesn't it? 
that you have this mummy's boy great relationship but then you have a serial killer that hates women hates them so what was going on there we don't know so i think he only spent really up until about 2002 i think he spent about one year in prison for all these little minor offenses he had done so there was criminality there but the thing is with Belfield, it's more about what we didn't know, you know, that what wasn't being seen, you know, he's just um, a person that was getting away with murder. And, and I've said before, and I've said it in Millie Dowler's case, you know, we don't really know what else Levi Belfield has done, even in the crimes now that they feel, you know, or just around that time they did believe that he was involved in and he could have possibly done. But I think there's more here. I think there's more to Le Levi than what we already know. This man didn't just start killing and going after children. He's always like children. He's always been a nasty piece of work to women. So what else is there that we don't know about Levi? And we probably won't know until a body's dug up somewhere or something else or someone comes forward with new evidence to prove that he's done certain crimes. The background of Levi leaves it wide open that this man has probably done a lot more murders than what he was actually convicted for. So the person that's made these claims or telling us about um, Levi's background is a girl called, I think it's Joanna Collins or Joe Collins as she's known. Now she claims all this in an interview with the son and she said he was a twisted murder, uh, murderer who had a bizarre relationship with his mother. So you're talking about someone, and her name is Jean Belfield, the uh, mother. So you're talking about someone, this Joe Collins, that knew him. She had two children by him. She was beaten by him. Did he strangle by him? Burnt with cigarettes by him? In this loving relationship, he was meant to be in with her. She was the lady, in Millie Dowler's case, where Millie was found. She was the horse rider. That's where he knew all these places. She was the horse rider. And as you know, we all ride in our family and you do go off and, you know, when we didn't have a lockdown, we was all over the place, weren't we? You know, doing shows and different things and competitions. So as a horse rider, she would have been out and about on these horses and we know that that's where Millie Downer was buried, wasn't it, in Yatley Wood, where she used to have or ride her horses and that's where he dumped Millie's body. So she sort of knows him really well. So if she says that this is what he was like, then it's probably true. But she also says what the mother was like. And um, as I said, she lived it. She lived it. So I'm not going to you know, disagree with her. I can actually believe it because a lot of these serial killers are either mummy's boys or have been influenced in some way by their mothers. Now, Jo also says that she was um, living, when she was living with Levi and in this relationship with Levi, she was subjected to years and years of rape. Um, you know, she couldn't say no to Levi. Um, and she was heavily pregnant at the time and um, he would still rape and beat her. He didn't really care. So she sort of says about this perfect son and then this serial killer on the other side, there's two sides to Levi Belfield. That's what she sort of says. Now, as I said, you know, she was literally, and she says it herself, beaten to a pulp by this man for many, many years and um, tried to tell the mother, but the mother just wouldn't have it. And so there was no stopping him, was there? Um, you know, and then we spoke about domestic abuse before when people accept this sort of behaviour from men like Levi Belfield. And I think it took her a long time to get away from him and to start her life again. But that's domestic abuse. That's what really happens in domestic abuses. These people can beat you and beat you and beat you, burn you with cigarettes, rape you, abuse you when you're pregnant, but you still stay. It's a state of mind, isn't it, that they're in. And it's a state of mind that someone like Levi Belfield would go for someone like that who can be easily uh, abused and you know manipulated into doing what they're told and to stay with them and to continue to have children with them so that they then 
you know, <laughs> have got you, haven't you? And I think this is what happened to Joe. But Joe was the one that did ring the police um, when the two girls were murdered in London before Millie, uh, just after Millie Dowler in 2011, were murdered and said that she believed that um, Levi Belfield was the killer. And she was absolutely right. So Joe says about that relationship with him and his mother and says his mother was the female version of him, really. You know, she would lend him money and treat him and everything else, even though these girls would be black and blue, the children would be distraught. You know, um, this, this woman could see no wrong in Levi as a mother. Now, we all have children, you know, ones of us, you know, those of us who do have children. And yes, I suppose we would accept certain things, but I certainly wouldn't accept my son um, beating on women and stuff like that. And I can imagine if I said to my son, come on, let me wipe your bottom at 13, I think he would have run a mile. I think most of most children would at that age, wouldn't they? Um, you know, <laughs> but not for Levi. Levi enjoyed it. He enjoyed that relationship with his mother because in the mother's eyes he was the perfect child. So I've said about Joe saying about the mother had such dark hair and she's a brunette and that's why he didn't kill blondes. As I said I, I, I don't agree with that um, at all. I don't think Levi Belfield cared who he killed. Um, and you know a lot of times um, with killers, don't they, you know, yeah, they do have their preferences and stuff like that. I mean, he's has said that he has, um, I think, uh, Holly Willoughby, and it's, she's a TV presenter on GMTV. He has a fascination with her, um, and she's very blonde. Um, and the thing is, when Levi Belfield says something to one of his pen pals he writes to or people like that that write to him as I've said before a lot of people write to serial killers and stuff and he's usually quite open actually in his letters to these pen pals and he says about Holly Willoughby and he says stuff you know and he's, he also says about other murders and stuff um, that he's done or insinuates that he's done to keep his name in the press but um, and he calls it you know his hobbies his killings were his hobby that he had. That's how he refers to his victims, or the way he killed, is his hobby. That was it, it was a hobby. <laughs> you can murder all these people terribly, and it's a hobby, and it's terrible. But a few years after he was arrested and charged for Willie Dowlett's murder, um, he then started to sort of say, because he wouldn't admit it would he for ages, and even though he was found guilty on CCTV, and the same as he was found guilty of the other two girls' murders, and we'll sort of go for that in a minute, that he, um, he sort of, um, you, you, you never know, listen, Levi Belfield is a liar, but in, in any lie, there's always some truth to it. So at first, it took a long time, didn't they, to work out how she was taken so fast. So we know, don't we, that he lived um, in the flats and then she was walking past and literally he snatched her. That's how quick it was. He dragged her through, took her into that flat and he didn't murder her then as he's saying. The, um, I think, abuse with Millie Dowler, the actual assault on Millie Dowler, lasted about 14 hours. Now, this family, and I've said before in the last video with Millie Dowler's family, that they had had you know, it's so terrible, isn't it, to lose your daughter. Then nine and a half years later, you have someone convicted of that murder and they've literally got him on CCT evidence, uh, CCTV evidence anyway because there wasn't much on this man. Um, and then after another year or so, he's come out with then, oh, I did do it. Then he's retracted it. Then he said what he did to her and how he did it and how long it took. I mean, this family were put through so much, really. But with Levi Belfield, you know, when he goes into detail about the murder, you can assume that if all of it's true, or some of it's true. But Millie Downer had a terrible death. So first let's talk about um, the murder, shall we, of um, 
Marsha MacDonald, now she was found laying in her own blood, covered in it actually, just metres from her home in Hampton. She had been bludgeoned to death. Now all of these victims were either getting off buses or stuff and we knew then that um, Levi was following them around and at the time I think he was a clamper and I don't know if we have them in the other countries I don't think we have them so much here now where they would clamp your car and you know, and, uh, you know it was a bit power trip you know it's like parking attendants and all that sort of thing but these are worse these were clampers you'd clamp your car cost you £400 to get your clamp off your car this is what Levi Belfield's job was at the time when he was tracking these women who was driving around the streets of London looking for people that are parked, you know, you know, incorrectly, should I say. I mean, in London, anywhere, you know, you're better off getting a ticket, really. But they've stopped clamping a bit now, but that's what he used to do. That gave him the opportunity, didn't it, then, to, as he was driving around these streets, you know, looking for cars that needed to be clamped. He was actually looking for victims. And actually, Marsha MacDonald was one of them. Yeah, and I think with Belfield, and I think that because he at the time, because he was a clamper, he was driving a little white van, and on the buses that Marsha was on as well, um, you could see the bus being followed by a little white van, and that was Levi Belfield. As I said, he did always sort of go for people at bus stops and stuff like that, or he followed them because he would know the bus routes, and being a clamper, he would have known all over the place, really. And he followed... Um, followed her as she got off the bus and um, she'd just been out on a night out of her mate, she'd got off the bus, she's walking home and literally he took a hammer and he bashed her head in and that's how she died. Uh, I think the pain must have been in, 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 in terrible really and I think her father actually told the journalist, you know, they're never going to get over it, they're never going to get over this death of how his daughter was murdered like that and just left. It was such a you know, I, it, the, his, with Belfield, you know, this was just hit, hit, hit to kill and leave. You know, what was the motive? The motive was because he could. It's a power trip, isn't it? I'm going to take your life. I'm going to follow you. You got off a bus for a nice night out. He's come up behind her and literally battered her to death. And it's about power for him because he just thought he could. And all killers have their own reasons why they do it. With Belfield, I think there was a multiple of reasons to why he killed the children and the rape, because Millie Dowlow, as we know now, of what he says he's done to her, was a sexually motivated crime, and I think the children were. Um, for the others, no, they weren't. It was a power trip for him. He could, and he did, and that was it. And I think he murdered her, I think it was a year after Millie Dowell, that was 2003 when he murdered her and she was 19 years old at the time of her murder. Uh, terrible, really terrible case that one. So then a year later in 2004, 18 year old Kate Sheedy had been knocked down and hit um, by a hit and run in uh, Arsworth. Now again, he thought he'd killed her, he didn't just run over her once, he ran over her reversed, back, back, you know, he he tried to kill her. Again, she had just got off a bus, she was crossing the street, and that's what he did. There's no motive apart from, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to run you over, I'm going to destroy you. He thought he left her for dead, actually. And literally, she clung onto her phone, rung her mother as she was dying, and told her mum that she was dying, and they traced her by that, and actually, then she survived. That's the only reason she survived. He actually thought he killed her. So Kate Sheedy is the only one actually that we know of any of Belfield's victims that is actually alive today. Of course, because the hit and run was so quick, she you know they couldn't um she couldn't give a witness, she knew it's a van, but she really couldn't give anything else. And plus the girl was absolutely terribly, terribly injured, um, broken bones and everything. This man <sighs> how he didn't kill her and how this girl survived and good for her for surviving. Uh, you know, he didn't, he, he didn't want her to survive. He'd done everything he could to kill this girl without even stepping out of his van. And then later that year, 
you had another attack then, and this was the French student, actually a French national, she wasn't a student, um, and she was 22 year old, and that was Amelia Delagrange, and she again was, um, yeah, I think it was in the Twickenham Park actually, a Twickenham Green, that she had you know, got off a bus, again you could see on the bus by the CCTV that this white van was following her, she's got off this bus, she's walked across Twickenham Green, this man's just come out and attacked her, bludgeoned her to death again and killed her. She, that was it. And the murder was so parallel then to the murder of Marsha MacDonald. Um, again, what's the motive? Power. I'm going to take your life. There's no sexual assault here. He just wanted to hurt, kill, take a life. And people we didn't know, he never knew these people at all. He'd seen them as he's driving around in his van, clamping cars. He's seen them get on a bus, he's followed the bus, he's watched them get off, he's parked up, he's killed them, he's got back in his van and gone on with his day. That's what Bill Field has done. And again, with Millie's case, you see, there was no, there was no evidence, was there? No physical evidence, anything, only CCTV, and even Millie on CCTV really didn't catch Belfield, but they caught him for these other two murders, and as I said before, it took nine and a half years actually after that to convict Belfield of Millie Dowler's murder. And then, so we've put this man in prison, have we, and uh, you know, for life, and we took him off the streets, and, and that's great, isn't it? But then things then start to come out to where this man then wants to hurt. As I've said, the things he'd done to Millie Dowler in that 14 hour um, torture and murder of this child. He says that he, um, and this is where if you are a bit squeamish, I would listen to this part, that he abducted Millie as she walked along and through the bush, she dragged her into the flat where he then continued to um, rape and abuse her. And you can imagine how violent this man is. And we are now talking about a 13 year old girl that he's doing this to. He then says that he then took her body to his mother's where he drove onto the long driveway, reversed up onto the long driveway. He then, that's what was in the red car coming out. So Millie was alive in that red car or barely alive. He then again raped her outside in his mother's garden uh, in broad daylight. This is what he's saying. And um, <laughs> then chucked her back in the car, um, took her somewhere else and raped her before in the end, strangling her in Yatley Wood where she was found. Her ordeal lasted 14 long hours by this man. That's how long it lasted and that's what he did to Millie Dowler. That's what he's told the families did to Millie Dowler. Then he says, after saying all this, I'm going to release it public, because he said he was going to re release publicly what he had done to Millie, the police then had to go to Millie Dowler's family and tell them what he was about to say about how he murdered Millie Dowler before they read it in some newspaper as if these people hadn't been through enough. Then after they've done all that, then he retracts it. He retracts that statement. So now it's out. The family's now been told. Now, as I said with Lee by Belfield, he does things because he's a narcissist. He's took this child's life from their family. He's took this child away from their family. He ain't leaving it there, is he? He doesn't want to leave it there. He wants to torture them. Now he wants them to know how she's died in detail. And he also wants them to know that that afternoon when that girl went missing, a few hours later, her uncle was out looking for her along that street. And who did he bump into? But Levi Belfield. And now Belfield said that Millie Downer was still alive at that point when the uncle was looking for her. You know, the twists and turns of Belfield to cause harm, to cause psychological damage to this family is shocking, really. He doesn't end there, you see. Now we start saying things about other murders. So Lynn and um, Megan Russell. Now Lynn was 45 and uh, Megan was six years old. Were murdered brutal. They was like a hammer attack. All right, same sort of thing as what he'd done to others. Uh, and it was near Canterbury, and it was more than 20 years ago. This murder. 
Now, also the family dog was killed. Well, um, <clears throat> Lynn Russell's, I think, nine-year-old other daughter, uh, Josie, suffered horrific, horrific injuries at that point. She wasn't killed, but she was left for dead, but she had terrible brain damage left from that incident. Um, now, <laughs> Michael Stone, he was charged with that murder. So, Michael Stone, he was convicted actually and it's still by and by actually under the conviction of this callous killing and it is a callous killing whoever would pull up onto someone walking their dog and their two children down a lane you know and then to be attacked with a hammer murdered and your nine-year-old left for dead suffering severe injuries so michael stone he was convicted and charged for that murder. Uh, that, the, the way he was convicted, again, there was no evidence, okay, no physical evidence. How, I don't know, right? It was covered in blood. Whoever done this crime with these people was covered in blood. But again, it was a quick um, <sighs> crime. You've got someone walking a dog down a lane, someone pulls up, jumps out of a van or a car, Beats these people, gets back in, and even the dog, is the dog is dead as well. He's beat the dog with the hammer, got back in the car and drove off. And they're saying it's Michael Stone, even though there's no physical evidence to prove it. So, as I said, even though there's no physical evidence at all to prove it was him. I think his conviction came from um, a cell, a cell, in cell confession. So, in, now whether someone, um, he had told someone or whatever, or he, or he had said he'd done it in there, but that's how it came. So it's from a confession given inside a prison by himself or by somebody else. So again, you know, and we've, actually, lately I'm telling you, I've been dealing with so many miscarriages of justice, you wouldn't believe it. So I think, you know, I'm not saying that Michael Stone isn't guilty of this, but Michael Stone may not be guilty of this because one, there's not enough evidence to prove he was. And it's not really his MO, really. He is a, a you know, a, a thief and, a, and stuff like that. Is he a murderer? I'm not really sure. But then we have then Belfield writing letters and talking about, you know, in his letters to his, you know, fans, where Belfield then told this pen pal that Lynn was his type. Now, again, let me explain about Belfield. We've said before and we're about his mentality, right? He likes to be the center of attention is very narcissistic he also says so that he describes how he likes outdoor afternoon action meaning murders because don't forget now he's also said that with Millie Dowler he's took her out into the open the mother's back garden raped her before he's took her elsewhere raped her and then strangled her so he likes the outdoor action this is what he's saying and this is about that and this is his addictive hobby, is murder. When he says an addictive, you know, <laughs> hobby, he's talking about murdering women. Uh, and he had also links to a family home within the Kent countryside of where this woman was murdered. So don't forget, this Michael Stone, this armed robber, and he is an armed robber, right? So he's a criminal, he's quite a violent criminal. <laughs> But whether he done this, I, I'm not sure. So Michael Stone was convicted of this killing in 2001 and it was largely based on his cell confession and there is no forensic evidence again at all. But then you have Levi Belfield, who's 51, or at the time of writing this letter, wrote this letter in prison and this was seen by, I think, the Sunday Mirror. Um, and um, he also said that the murders was not his problem at present meaning he hasn't got to talk about them because this man's in um, prison. He also laughs and joke about this man being um, convicted of this crime that he done in prison. He is so in your face, this Belfield, um, he doesn't care. But because the police say Belfield then had denied all that and then he had an alibi for that, they've left that alone. So we never know with that one, will we? As usual, another case that yes, they've had a conviction, but whether they've got the right one, which is always questionable lately, um, I don't know. I really don't know. 
So Bill, Bill Field, when we get back to Belfield, he was this, is an ex-bouncer, right? And they, the police have said he's quite a big man. His neck was quite, you know, quite big. Fat, really, because he likes to think he's... He, he, he was a fat man, but he had this big neck and he portrayed himself as this, you know, bouncer. And then he was a taxi driver, wasn't he? And then he was this, you know, you know, clamper. Um, he liked all these sort of things. All these sort of jobs with Belfield got him around the streets of where he was picking up and killing these people. They also nicknamed him the Hammer Man after using and battering these, you know, these two victims to death, the ones they know about, Marshall McDonald and Amelia Delagrange, to death on the attacks of 2003 and 2004. So that's what they call him, and he seems to love that name. So when we say to someone that, you know, this man is called the Hammer Man, and then we look at the case of Lynn and her children, you think, you know, this is more his MO, isn't it? Really, and if someone hadn't given an alibi, um, he would have been um, really a, a major suspect in this crime. Also, Lynn had very, very dark hair, curly hair, so, because people think that Billfield doesn't kill, you know, dark haired people, which is absolutely bloody nonsense a killer when you're driving along and you're a killer and you're a killer like Belfield where it's a power and you've got a woman walking along with her kids and a dog on a Sunday afternoon out you jump out your van and you batter them to death with a hammer I think it's more Belfield than anything but we could be wrong let me know what you think about that one there's more to come on Belfield so this pen pal asked him what sort of women does he like um, and he said, I said before about Holly Willoughby and stuff like that. And if you know Holly Willoughby, she's lovely, isn't she? Holly, Holly Willoughby, her personality is great anyway. Um, but he also said, he wrote about Lynn, the murders of Lynn and the family. He said he was also attracted to older, older women, dark curly haired, 40, 40 to 45. This is what he's saying. Slim, the horse type, you know, the outdoor dog walker type the housewife type he likes. I had a thing for that type of women, he writes, don't we all? So when he's telling you about the women he likes, it could be anyone, couldn't it? Because he's just described them, but he's also described Lynn, the girl that was murdered with her children, in his description of what he likes, the dog walkers, the horse riders, the country people, that's his sort of thing, the dark curly hair. You know, that's what he likes, the older women, 40 to 45. That's what he likes. So where then does it say that Levi Belfield only kills blondes? He certainly hasn't said it. This is other people saying it. Levi Belfield, I've said before, will kill anybody that he has an opportunity to kill. And so I really do believe there's a lot more to this case with that than, than anything, but anyway, you know, he also had links, I think, to Surrey and Kent and Bath. He had links all over the place, really. I think even Blackpool. This man was everywhere, really. And it would be quite, uh, you know, it wouldn't be, you know, the case, I think, that sooner or later, there is more issues coming out with Belfield. I don't think we've heard the last of Belfield when it comes to unsolved murders, to tell you the truth. I think he could be in a frame for a, a good many murders. And you know, at the end of this letter, I'm going to have to add it on, I to tell you, to really try and show you this man's personality. So he said, as you are aware, I enjoy some, I enjoy some outdoor fun. Really enjoy it. So much, the area certainly accommodate my activity and my hobbies. So <laughs> he's trying to say to you, all this pen pal he's got, I enjoy it. I enjoy my hobbies. This man is a narcissistic psychopath. That's what he is. Thank God that the judge has given him life without parole. This man's never getting out. He couldn't. Now there is other things about this man. Um, old cases um, that have come up that he could have been also potentially 
you know, up for. Okay, so let's talk about this killer, Levi Belfield. Dating as far back as 1980, right? 1980. He has been suspect of crimes involving women since 1980. Now, one of these was Patsy Morris, who was at the time his 14-year-old girlfriend at the time, before him she was found strangled again in Heathland in 1980. So, Belfield is not just a killer, is he? Because he hates to be called anything else. You know, he doesn't mind being called serial killer, but he doesn't like to be called a paedophile, uh, which he is, you know, he is. He is this man that didn't want to admit Millie Dale was murder because of her age. He didn't mind admitting bludgeoning to death and stuff, other ones because they were 19 or 22, but he didn't really want to be known as the paedophile murderer that he is for killing Millie Dowler. He hates that term. Well, you know, I think, you know, if it fits, wear it. And so that's what we're going to call him. And then you think right the way back in 1980, when this man was young and he had a 14 year old girlfriend at the time, who then turns up dead, strangled, left on Heath Heathland. You think, right, so he has been, as many, many serial killers have been, a perpetrator for very many years. And this is what makes me think with Levi Belfield, that how many more is there? You know, there must be loads that we don't know about. There must be. And this man is such a narcissist. You couldn't believe a word he says anyway. Because half it's for highlights, you know, the, the you know, I, I want to get in the news, I want my 15 minutes of fame and, and this, you know, because this is all this man has got, isn't it? This is all he's got left, is what he says. How much can I hurt someone? How much can I damage more? You know, I'm going to release things to the press, but on my terms. I mean, the thing is with Levi Belfield, you know, <laughs> he got away with it in the 80s, probably, and in the 90s, but the minute the 2000s hit when London was full of CCTV and everything else. He was caught because he's like most people now that have got away with it from a young age and then think they're never going to get caught when he was. And he's continued, hasn't he, to hurt people with his words ever since. So listen, we don't know what part of Belfield's version of how Millie Dowler died. We don't know. We can assume some of it or all of it is true. So the girl had a terrible death by a man that is a paedophile. That's what he is. And a murderer of children. The day before he abducted Millie, he tried to abduct an 11 year old child. It didn't work. His home daughter says, as he was taken to school, that he would beep shout out things at children in full uniform. They were in full school uniform. He knew they was children. He knew they was. He used to take his own children on drug deals. He took his oldest daughter to the apartment or the flat where he murdered Millie Dowler and the signs were already up looking for Millie. And that is the place that he murdered her. He would, he would pick these children up from school that gave him access to other kids and shout out the car, woohoo, whistle at them, wolf whistle at children walking by. This man is a dangerous man. He was born a narcissist. He was born into a family or to a mother that allowed him to thrive as a narcissist, allowed it. Now, you can't blame her for his murders, but there's someone to blame or something to blame, isn't there? Because this man just continues, or continued in his mother's eyes, to be the perfect son. The mummy's boy, the serial killer. Now she's dead and this man's on his own. He has his pen pals he writes to, but they sell their stories on what he says to people. Levi Belfield will rot in prison. 
for the rest of his natural life, where he belongs. And I think the more we try and give this man time, you know, like this, because I'll never do him again, that's it. I'm done with Levi Belfield, that's me, I'm done with him. Because I wanted to try and explain to you what this man's like, what he's really like, what his life was like before he was caught for the murders that he did. He's a sick individual, a sick man who really still tries to intimidate, to hurt people, secondary victims in this, to destroy families. That's what this man's trying to do all the time. So anyway, this has been the Levi Belfield case. And, you know, <laughs> what else can I say about him, really? So, you know what to do. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thumbs up if you've liked it, if you found this interesting. You can leave me some comments because I'll answer some comments on him. But other than that, you know, <laughs> with people like Belfield, you know, really, they're best forgotten because this hope this man never gets out for any reason. So no, no do-gooder out there, because we have a few, that feel, oh, we can't lock criminals up like this for life. Yes, we can, absolutely, for the rest of his life. And if this would have been in America, that would have been it. He would have got the death penalty. We all know it. But in this country, he's got life, and that's exactly where he belongs. That's him done. So... You know what to do. Um, you can follow this on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. You can listen to this at some point on Spotify because I've got about four to put up. And as usual, all my lovely partners in crimes, my members lounge, you'll be listed below. So thank you very much. I hope you like the new editing. Hopefully it goes well saying that. And until the next time, bye-bye.